Yo, what the hell is a flippin'? Welcome back to the channel. You are watching the Flippin' Podcast, and I am your host, Flippin'. What I want to talk tonight about is about fat acceptance. While I bring this up, I would like for everybody on both sides of the equation to know that once you start attacking somebody, they shut you off. All right. So if you could, if you can provide a valid argument to any conversation that says that, you know, hey, look, I care about this issue enough to have this conversation with you and I want to keep this going, then you would definitely keep the the the, the slurs out of your mouth, uh, attacking somebody personally and just keeping it open. Don't make that person the avatar of your uh, of your uh, dispute. All right. Because remember, we're all human. We want to get our point across and this is the best way i know how to do it and if you don't believe that i would say talk to women if you start attacking women in a way like you're this and you're that yeah it's not gonna go that well for you all right that's with anybody everybody has those feelings and nobody wants to be attacked all right so let's go ahead and get into it. we got bill Mar maher here and i like bill maher as a comedian uh, i think he's uh pretty rational from time to time Let's talk about it. And finally, new rule, everybody should be allowed to let themselves go a couple of times a year. Like now, the dog days of summer, school's out, rules out, tot, vacation time, no one should have to diet on vacation. And the holidays, that's the other, okay, I'll let myself go time of year. And okay, so for, for Whenever you go on vacation in the holidays, look, it's okay to enjoy yourself, but there's a such thing as overeating, all right? And I'm pretty sure this is satire, whatever he's saying right now. Who can blame us? It's the end of the year, it's structured around feast days. No one should feel bad about opening up the pants after Thanksgiving dinner and doing that thing where you undo the top button and try to hold it together with just the belt. <laughs> That's all fine but not all year round. And that's what's kind of happened to America, letting ourselves go now. As I do agree with what he's saying. Food's addicting, all right? Don't let it grab a hold of you and don't let it control your life. I know this is supposed to be transformative, but I agree with the points that he's making here. Come the holidays, you should be able to cut loose and, and uh, while being disciplined, you should be able to cut loose and, you know, stuff yourself with all the foods that are there the thing is is that people do it all year round they try to go on a diet so they can eat for the holidays and it just ends up making them binge over the holidays and then it's just a never-ending cycle year after year so coming up for me is going to be thanksgiving we're in the month of september so that's going to be the the day that like i know there's going to be a ton of food out that i want to try not try i've known these people for years now i'm going to try to eat all of it i'm going to try to put a little bit of this on my plate a little bit of that on my plate but you see that is discipline that's an all year round thing doing the thanksgiving pants thing every day <laughs> they They actually sell a business suit now with drawstring pants. I saw this, I swear, I saw this in the mall and I said to the salesman, this is pathetic. It shows how much we've given up. And he said, no, people love it. So a part of the fat acceptance movement is not being able to fit into regular people's clothing. All right, I get this. These are jokes and this is satire and he's telling it in a way that, you know, is digestible to everybody. You can hear everybody in the uh, in the audience is, you know, key keying and laughing, probably except for that one fat dude or one fat chick who believes that he's attacking them, you know, directly. He didn't make anybody an avatar. And in fact, you can't see anybody's face in this one. I believe this one is a man, maybe a woman. It's got very feminine hands for a man. Um, uh, there was something else I wanted to say about this one, but we'll just keep it moving. Of course they love it. You can have a mongoose for lunch and then give that big presentation. There's a disturbing trend going on in America these days. Rewriting science to fit ideology or just to fit what you want reality to be. We've gone from fat acceptance to fat celebration. That's new. 
That is new. Well, it is true. Like, you can't... The thing is, is that, like, anytime you try to tell somebody what's wrong with them, even though it's to help, it's to benefit them. Because let's be honest, like, fat, being obese, it, it's a, 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 a crappier quality of life that you're not going to live for very long. And you feed off of, well, everything really, but the endorphins, when as you eat, it makes you want to eat more. It makes you feel good to eat. And then whenever somebody tries to take your precious away from you, what happens is that you... Uh, you get upset. You you throw a tantrum. You're like, yo, I could do whatever I want. To view letting yourself go as a point of pride? We used to at least try and be fit and healthy, and society praised those who succeeded. Now the term body positivity is used to mean I'm perfect the way I am because I'm me. Body positivity was a movement well, it started off as a movement for like uh, people who lost limbs and people who were born with deformities. And now all it is is just a feel good all around kind of deal. I want to tie this into something because it's the instant gratification of what's happening. Uh, the instant gratification for Americans these days. Gone are the days where you actually have to go to the store and actually pick out the food and, you know, uh, maybe uh feel the scrutiny of other people watching you put all those oreos in your shopping cart while you're sitting in a rascal and no other reason for you to sit in a rascal other than the fact that you're just overweight you know overweight enough to where it hurts to walk so what the internet did or what the internet made us capable of doing is ordering all that junk food so we don't have to face the scrutiny of the real world what what I would say is not bullying per se, not saying like, let's bring bullying back, but let's bring back being able to tell people the hard truth. It's not one way, like you can't bully people in the other way. You, you should be fully allowed to bully somebody till the point they want to delete themselves. Like there's no middle ground there. It's just being able to bring back the truth in what somebody says. So like if somebody goes, well, um, let's say, I'm fat and I'm healthy, I should be able to go, no, you're not. What you're saying is a lie. You know, you may have been healthy or had good blood work back whenever you were 19, but what's gonna happen whenever you're 30? The thing is, is people don't care about the future date. They care about what's happening right now. They're like, you know what? If I died at 30, it'd be a good life. And then 29 creeps up and they're like, holy crap, I don't wanna die at 30. Wellian, how often positivity is used to describe what's not healthy. Of course you can get away with anything bad for you when you're young, but let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a fat 90-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> Scary, isn't it? <laughs> healthy at any weight is an unchallenged lie that people... Like you said there, it's an unchallenged lie. You, you can't challenge anybody who, cause if you think about it, a lot of Americans are either overweight or obese and we have an issue with, with eating the food. Well, we don't have an issue with eating the food. We have an issue with not eating the food. All right, so anytime somebody, uh, like, like I said, if people face the type of scrutiny like, hey, look, you can't just say whatever you want and expect everybody to go, yeah, okay, uh-huh, yeah, that's, when did we get to this point where like, you know, you could be canceled for telling the truth? You didn't bully anybody. In fact, whenever I go out in the public and I see, um, you know, I go out to, to shop at a, a food store. I see fat people there all the time. I have nothing to say to them. I could watch them fill that card up with cookies. I have nothing to say to them. As soon as they go, I'm on a diet and this is going to get me where I need to be. I might have something to say to him, but see, the thing is, is like, I don't have anything. To, we're not, we're not letting, it's not like we're just ripping in the fat people walking out of their door, telling them to lose some weight. I would call that bullying. 
What I'm saying is whenever people have a platform to talk about fat acceptance and what they're saying is straight up garbage and it's not un it's not related to the actual science behind it, that's when we should be able to call people out, put a dunce cap on them and sit them in the corner. Probably not that last part because that'd be a bullying part. Just tell them no and smack them on the hand or something like that. Tell themselves so they can go on eating whatever they want, which is fine. I've done many self-destructive things too, but no one pretended there was positivity in smoking. Fat activist Ted Kyle, founder of Conscient Health, says the media and public needs to stop catastrophizing obesity. Okay, A, they're not catastrophizing it, and B, they should be. So a catastrophe would be like if you were to die, if something was to, 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 uh, to kill you. That'd be a uh, catastrophe. Something that you can see coming, that is not a catastrophe. It might feel, the, the feel that way to the people that loved you, but the thing is, is that everybody should see that one coming. Now, if you're 400 pounds and got T-boned, that's completely different. But if you're 400 pounds and you're 30 years old, where you should have at least 40 more years to your life and you die at the age of 30, that's something that people would, should have seen coming. And the people who allowed you to get there, are they really your friends? If they never talk about it or watch you, you know, self-destruct, that's not a friendship. And see, the thing is, if I told somebody and they were still, still self-destructing, they wouldn't be my friend anymore because they stopped listening to me. There's nothing I could do there. Because it's a full-blown catastrophe. Poor diet is the leading cause of mortality in the United States. New York Times. Okay. Of course, we're talking about heart disease and cancer and diabetes, but also as COVID has taught us, obesity is horrible for the immune system. So I, I, I think it's great that he brought this one up. It's like, um, because he, he said earlier and I said earlier that like when you're 19 and you're overweight, you're probably not feeling it as much as whenever you're about 30, 35 years old, 40 and overweight. The body breaks down as you get older. In fact, testosterone starts to leave at a 1% rate every year for men uh, after the age of 42, or that's what the science tells us. All right. Um, so the older you get, the more your body's going to break down and there's not really much you could do about it other than trying to be as fit as possible, as healthy as possible. There's ways to go about losing weight without even having to touch a weight or do cardio. But see, the thing is, is if you leave those things out, you leave out some of the best parts of health keeping, like being able to make it to the age of instead of making it to 70, you made it to 81. You know, so these are things that you could do right now to actually boost the life that, that you're going to live. If you were to start it at the age of 65, it's almost like a, a savings account. I'm going to save way more money starting at 25 than I will starting at 65. Your health is the same way, your health bank account. And the more you, the, the more you abuse your body throughout the years, the less the end result, the less great the end result is going to be, right? You want your knees to start hurting at the age of 25 or at the age of 45? Do you want to have to do uh, do you want to have to do uh, surgeries on your on your joints at the age of 25 or at the age of 45? Both of them aren't pleasant situations, but see the thing is you got to use your joints and your body for the for the better part of that that, that 20 years more than if you were just to you know abuse your body all, from the age of 15 to 25 and now you need surgeries at the age of 25. It's kind of how like the health and fitness thing kind of works out in your age. If you abuse your body, it looks like you're, you're going to be real 42-ish by the time you kick the bucket. Why those numbers were off the charts during the pandemic. That's a catastrophe. It's literally a national security issue now. Military recruitment is down by the most since the end of the draft because mainly 17 to 24 year olds are too fat to fight. You see, I, I, I know the undertone and there's a lot of comedy in the truth. But if people understood what that truth meant, they wouldn't be laughing. They'd be trying to do something about it. 
All right, because like now, like it, you'd be hard pressed to get 30 year old me to even sign any paperwork relating to the government. I'm not going to do it. I'm too old for that. I'm too wise for that. And I can make way more money. And let me tell you, I'm not getting up at zero, zero, four hundred and running anywhere. You got to be out your mind. But back whenever I was 18, I just got out of high school and I was trying to prove myself. Oh, yeah, that's me all day, every day. But see, back then I was fit just like I'm fit now. And I came into a Marine Corps where they were trying to give waivers to people who couldn't pass their PT test to get in. But the military and the U.S. government and the U.S. people needed them. So they got waivers and they went to boot camp, not capable of pulling me out of a uh, pool if I was drowning, not able to pull me off a battlefield if I was shot or hurt. You know, that like these are things that can really let you down. Like, wouldn't you feel a lot better if there was like, you know, is your fit and the team you're going out is fit. And so they could at least bring drag your body back to the United States if you were to die. I would hate to get have my body left over in country for well, I wouldn't hate it while I was, you know, <laughs> deleted, but you know, I would hate for my family to never have anything to bury. You know what I'm saying? But now you're talking about fitness in the military if we don't have anybody that's there to fight for us i'm pretty sure that freedom of speech that everybody you know enjoys goes away the freedom to travel here and there the freedom to not get you know backhanded by your your spouse the freedom uh, the the freedom of the press like every freedom is going to rely on this if we don't have our 17 to 24 year olds joining the military what are we going to do whenever i'm old and i can't move around i would love love to know that this country is still protected by the fit young men and women. At some point, acceptance becomes enabling. And if you're in any way participating in this joyful celebration of gluttony that goes on now, you have blood on your hands. Full stop. All right. I, I I think I'm going to leave this video there because there's not really much more we can add to this. I mean, he's he's making a good point and I'll leave this. Um, I'll leave the link down below because this is a truth that everybody that everybody needs to hear. Not only the people who are overweight, because what are you going to do? Laugh at them? Like, ha ha ha. You're overweight and you can't do anything and I'm better than you. That gets us nowhere. If you look at russia you know everybody's so afraid of russia we have this picture in our head of what russia is and how brutal they can be but then if you were to actually visit they might be a softer kinder people than what you think and i'm not siding with russia on any of this just in case anybody tries to go back but see the thing is is that americans we're the fattest ones in in the world right now so think about what everybody thinks about us they don't think about us as a fighting force you know to be reckoned with anymore they think of us as people in rascals rolling through aisle three to six and just scooping all the cookies in our cart that's what people think of us they don't think of us as scary and don't you don't want to go to war with them they spank booty but all right if you've got nothing for me i've got nothing for you and i'll see you in the next one